Car dealers have been getting cocky, they've literally screwed the customers, and now they're paying the price. It's bad enough when you walk in the car lots and you're seeing trucks, SUVs, cars all over abound. A lot of these manufacturers were getting cocky, knowing that, oh, I can sell anything at virtually any price. But customers are catching on to that and they're just had enough. Even the likes of Mercedes-Benz. Did you hear what they did with their new latest and greatest C63S? So Mercedes, in their ultimate wisdom, thought that they would convert one of their most interesting fire-breathing Mercedes C63S that came with a twin-turbo V8 that everybody loved. Everybody has always grown accustomed to having that big V8 powertrain under the hood of your Mercedes-Benz. And then they thought, because of the sheer arrogance and the fact that they were literally trying to do anything, didn't matter what the customers wanted, they came out with a late model Mercedes C63S that was now a turbo four cylinder engine with a little bit of hybrid action for boost, contrary to obviously what customers wanted. And as a result, it was just proof that car dealers could do anything in the last couple years forsake anything that customers actually wanted. They didn't seem to care and that's why Cars like this are a literal flop. And it's just proven the arrogance. And car sales were the same way. They could literally sell, do anything they wanted. They figured that there was always somebody waiting behind you, willing to buy that car, regardless of what you wanted. Well, guess what? That's not happening anymore. And guess what? Nobody's buying the four-cylinder Mercedes C63 either. And it's proof now that people have finally figured this out that 40, 50% increases in the base MSRP wasn't going to cut it anymore. People are saying, yeah, oh, that's great. Mark it up 60% only to follow it up with a $3,000 or $2,500 discount as an incentive. People are done. They realized even incorporating the rates of, of course, with inflation, we're not even near there yet. However, things are changing. And that's why, in fact, a lot of these OEMs are now screwed because people figured it out. And now we're in a place we're going to start stabilizing. We're going to start seeing prices drop hard on the used car market and equally, almost equally as hard on the new car market. So bad, in fact, Tesla's making changes. Almost OEM, you're seeing incentives all over the place. They're just starting to creep in. It's what I consider the small end of the wedge. Yes, that was clearly an example of a manufacturer doing whatever they want, regardless of what the customers are asking for, converting to a four-cylinder where everybody expected a V8, clearly out of touch with the buyer. As well, as you look at Tesla, now they're not selling, their sales are slumping, and Tesla's telling us that they're going to have to readjust and start slashing prices again new. I've personally experienced car manufacturers not even wanting to deal. You walk in there with the expectation of trying to cut a dollar or two off the MSRP and they wouldn't have it. They're just like, it's not it. It's you're not having it. And as a matter of fact, if you don't like the price, which is this price plus these extras, don't bother. There's somebody else that's willing to buy. And that was the place people were, that was the stand a lot of these OEMs were starting to take. The tides have literally turned and people are getting fed up with high interest rates and interest rate charges of 10 or 11 or 12 percent or even subprime being up over 20 percent customers have literally had enough trucks aren't selling suvs aren't selling cars aren't selling nothing is selling i walk down car lots and i can't tell you how many of these car lots i see and there's nobody on the lots yeah they have about five or six salespeople in the showroom waiting to pounce on you but there's Nobody walk in the lots. Very few people are buying because they're realizing even with some of these small incentives, prices are still way too high. Things are changing, in fact. Even with all these unscrupulous sales tactics that a lot of these OEMs have been trying on the garden variety consumer like you and I, now prices are starting to come down. There's a big price cut. As a matter of fact, this year they're talking about 14% right off the bottom for used cars and as much as 7% on the price of new vehicles and the transaction prices we're starting to see some big movement and it goes way beyond just the average incentivization we know incentives you know zero percent for three years nobody's doing that anyway most people are taking their car loans out for four or five years or beyond and not only that i can't tell you how many stories i've heard of people paying more for a slightly
slightly used vehicle than they were for a brand new version, but it saved them waiting for that vehicle. Things were totally upside down in the last three years, but things are in fact changing to the point where these car manufacturers are screwing the buyers and now in fact they're paying the price. A new report from Car Guru states that we're about to see a car market that's transitioning for more moderation. We're starting to see the moder the market moderate, soften up. We're going to see a big drop in car prices, whether you're buying used or whether you're buying new. We're, we're about to see some major drops in the price tags of a lot of these vehicles. And the average transaction prices are about to level out. And as well, we'd like to see a phenomenon like this continue on for the next few years. Now, will we start to see pre-2019 prices? Time will tell, but we're definitely trending that way. Now, Kevin Roberts, Director of Industry Insights and Analytics over at Car Gurus, is stating, there's hope for additional price decreases as prices start to normalize to inflation-adjusted levels. Yeah, in other words, what we're starting to see is there's a natural inflation, 2 to 3% year over year is what we see typically in the market, but we've seen much bigger numbers, 5, 10, 20% year over year in the last three or four years. But guess what? Starting to see those, those numbers and those factors level out to the point where we're going to start stabilizing to what would have normally been the typical inflation rate. So what would that have been if we didn't see these weird anomalies in the last two or three years? Those are the rates we're more likely about to see. Are we in fact going to see 2019 levels? Probably not because inflation is still a real beast. But in fact, we may start to see numbers of 14% right off the top for prices on used vehicles and as well 7% off the top on brand new vehicles. So for used vehicles, we're about to see about a $3,900 average slice off the top from about $28,600 from March all the way down to some more of a baseline of $24,700. So we're gonna see a pretty significant average slice off the bottom line. But new vehicles, it's this very similar conversation where we go from $49,600 is the average transaction price down to about 46 grand or even slightly lower than that is what we're gonna to start to see here in a very short order. So if people have been asking me, do I buy now? Should I buy now? I have always said, wait, wait till after vacation season, wait even further. If you can wait and push that old vehicle a little bit longer, do a couple oil services, get that brakes changed. Maybe you can push your vehicle's life out till the end of the year. You're probably going to see even better deals yet. So what's actually happening in the market that's screwing these dealers and giving the buyers a little bit more of an upper hand or transitioning that way? Well, for one, of course, auto loan rates. A lot of people have just done with taking the beats. We know those auto loan rates haven't really changed all that much. We know the, the inflationary numbers are stable. There's way too much inventory. We're starting to fill up the lots. And we've already said before, we're seeing much more inventory than we've seen in a long time, both new and used. Well, late model used vehicles are still a little bit of a gem and they're still hard to come by, especially if they're CPO or a quality used vehicle. The fact remains is overall prices are dropping and they have to drop because people aren't buying. And why aren't they buying? Well, what's happening is interest rates are still stable. Canada, US banks are literally not making adjustments. We're seeing inflation just holding steady. Interest rates by the reserves of Bank of Canada, Bank of US are not really changing. They don't have an appetite to change because inflation isn't dropping. People are still buying, but the buying is somewhat artificial. With mass immigration, GDP numbers are still holding steady. And as long as the spend is averaging out, inflation is somewhat artificial. And because it's artificial, a lot of the cost people are spending on higher cost homes, higher cost for food, and the basic essentials are still higher than they've ever been, indicating that people are spending more money when in fact they just have less money to hold in their back pockets. And the reality is the spend is there holding inflation steady. Because inflation is steady, interest rates aren't moving anywhere fast. People are just done. They're not able to hold on and withstand and they're just losing the appetite to buy a vehicle at 10 or 12% interest rates or even to over 20% for subprime borrowers. People are just tired of it. They can't tolerate it. And quite frankly, the banks are a big part of the problem because even they are no longer lending money to delinquent buyers. That's right. A lot of people are upside down on their mortgages, their loans, their car loans. And because of that, what we're starting to see is banks are getting a little tightening up the shrink and they're less likely to lend out some money for a car buyer. So as a result, less people are either qualifying, less people have the appetite to buy a new car or used car. And as a result, more vehicles, more inventory are flooding up the markets. And of course, as that happens, we're starting to also see another contributing factor 
All these OEMs are coming out with new great vehicles, new technology, which is challenging the old norm. As these new markets, these new cars come out, people are losing interest in some of the older vehicles. As that happens, used vehicle prices starting to fluctuate, but they're, if anything, starting to drop because of all these new fresh models. People are trying different things. For the few people that can afford a new vehicle, that can afford that new electric vehicle, that can afford that new SUV or that new pickup truck, those are the few people are trying these new experimental you know, vehicles that are hitting the market and less appetite for the older vehicles. So as a result, prices are dropping even harder on the used car market. And our buddy Jonathan Smoke over at Cox Automotive is actually saying, demand is tepid at best, as shoppers just don't have any urgency to buy in this current economic environment. As a matter of fact, I've even heard people that had deposits even on some of the exotic cars, for example, Ferrari and the 296 GTB. And I've heard through Grapevine that there's many people that are dropping or pulling their deposits, taking their deposits back, because now that we've transitioned to this space, people have less money to spend. Taxation's gone up, less disposable income. People are losing the appetite to buy these vehicles. And you can also add to that, the average auto loan interest rates for used vehicles was up to about 11.9% back in the last of 2023, up from about 10.4% the year before. So interest rates continue to climb, not influencing anybody to buy a vehicle because if you're having to borrow more and more money just to get the same vehicle, who wants to? Save your money, drive what you got. And that's the way a lot of people are starting to think about this. And some of those used vehicles were hard to come by. The late model ones with the good mileage, as I mentioned already, well-maintained, good service history, were hard to come by and people were paying an arm and three legs for those, but people have definitely even subsided from that. Now as inventory on brand new vehicles and they're incentivized, so you've got to think about this, okay? You can get yourself a one-year-old Toyota Tacoma, but you might pay 12% interest rate on it uh, you might save two or three thousand dollars on the base price of that vehicle because they don't depreciate that hard or you get a brand new one you might have to wait four months but you get a brand new one with a much much lower interest rate at 3.9 percent for example much cheaper to borrow and only a couple grand more on the base price of that vehicle. A lot of people are electing now because the inventory is out there, because there's options, they're deciding, you know what, probably just better off buying that new vehicle instead of buying that used one, right? So all of that hurts the competition for the used market. And in other words, that competition is no longer there what it was two years ago. And as a result, used car dealers are struggling to sell some of their used products. Car buyers, even if they have the money, they're choosing to look more in the new sector. Now, because there is more inventory, there's less waiting, there's more incentives. You don't get those incentives on the used market like you do in the new market, so people are just going that route. But the beauty in all of this, if you're looking for a vehicle that's over five years of age, there's a gross increase in inventory to the tune of about almost 20% more inventory out there for vehicles that are beyond five years old. So if you look at one, it's well sorted, it's been well maintained, good get service history on it, which you definitely want to do that. And I would suggest if you're paying a decent dollar for it, I would suggest a pre-purchase inspection on it, do a car proof, make sure there's no accident history, it hasn't been flooded. You can get an amazing car that might be five or six years old because there's a lot more to choose from today than there was two years ago. So in my opinion, we're on the eve of this car market crash. We're starting to see early predictions. We're starting to see early signs and symptoms of what the market is going to do in the next few years. But the trend is definitely in that direction. Even with a slump in interest rates, that we do predict still by the end of the year, we do see or anticipate some drop in interest levels. We just don't see the cost of living changing all that much generally across the board. You know, at the major centers, houses are extremely expensive. Food costs are going up. Carbon taxes are impacting a lot of food, transportation, and people just don't have the money or the means. So still the sales, the car sales and truck and SUV sales market are going to hurt for quite some time, which if you are in the market, you could be in for some serious deals coming up this year. And with all of that said, if you are looking for one of those older used vehicles, you definitely want to check that video because I give you a list of some of the best cars available under 10 grand. And so you can literally avoid this brand new car crisis. Hope to see each and every one on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.